and that is extracting cubic maps first. So once again, let's start with our tile set. And let's say I want to run cubic maps first, which means six different renders looking forward, backwards, left, right, up and down. In order to cover a 360, we need cameras that have a 90 degree field of view, so they form a perfect box. So let's go ahead and create a camera. Here it is. And um, let's say this is looking down the negative z-axis, so that's going to be our front view, or minus z. But first of all, we need to set it up so it has a 90 degree field of view. And um, if you have a field of view calculator of some sorts, use that. I just happen to know that a focal length of 45 mil and an aperture of 90 mil will actually yield a perfect 90 degree field of view. So that's usually the values I use. It doesn't really matter what values you get in here because we're making this camera up from scratch. As long as the field of view is a 90 degree one, then everything is fine. So let's label this minus Z and uh, then just copy the whole thing Oops, and rotate it by 180 degrees over Y to give us the plus Z or backwards view. So just the label here. And now we do that with X. So I'm just going to rotate it over 90 degrees or by 90 degrees over Y and that makes it look into the negative X axis. If you check out the tripod in the lower left corner of the viewer, that'll tell you about the direction. So we'll call this minus X. Then we proceed to the minus 90 degree one. So that's looking into plus X now. And you can already see if you look at all all the cameras at once, that we're starting to form a cube with the uh, frustums, which is the reason why we needed a 90 degree field of view. So what's left now is the uh, top and bottom view. So let's start with uh, 0 in Y and minus 90 in X. So that is looking down now. And finally we get 0 in Y and uh, plus 90 in X and that is looking up. Let's get rid of the scene, we don't really need that. And uh, let's just go ahead and adjust the labels. So that's minus Y and plus Y. So now I want to render the whole thing through those six cameras. Instead of duplicating the scanline render node, what I usually do is just attach all those things to a switch node. And um, you see that's, that they're pretty much connected in a random order now. We've got pipe 0 here, pipe 1 here, pipe 2 here. So what you can do is select the single nodes left to right and then create the switch node. And that will ensure that they're connected in the order you selected them. So now we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that switch node can be fed into the camera pipe of the scanline render node. If we now look at the 2D output of that, we can now use the switch node to choose between the different views. So that's pipe 1, that's pipe 2, and so forth. Now one thing left to do, just like we did before, we have to still set a render output resolution. In this case, obviously, it has to be a square resolution. So just like before, I'm going to attach a reformat node and switch it over to box mode, force this shape, and we'll run cubic tiles of the resolution of um, 800 by 800, let's say. So now I'm ready to run this out to disk. And instead of lat long, I'm just going to call them cubic and give them a frame padding so we can actually run all six frames at once. And uh, now all we have to do is animate the switch node so we get pipe 0 at frame 1, pipe 1 at frame 2, and so forth. And in order to get that, I'm just going to put an expression into the which knob of the switch node, which is simply frame. But because we're starting rendering at frame 1 and the switch node starts with pipe 0, we need to subtract 1 from the current frame. So now I get frame 0 at frame 1 and if I go forward one frame, we get pipe 2, pipe 3, oops, pipe 1, pipe 2, pipe 3, pipe 4 and pipe 5 at frame 6. So now we can actually run the first six frames to run out all six cubic maps. And once we've done that, we'll pull them back in. So I'll just hit the read file checkbox here. 
and that gives us our six pack and you can already see that if we look at the top tile for example there's no vortex in problems at all it's all nice and smooth and because we're running six tiles to create the environment this is actually a lot easier on the render machine and you can achieve higher resolutions so let's say we've got our cubic maps and now we want to transform this into a spherical map again after maybe retouching the clouds in the top tile here the easiest way to do this is to use the spherical map or the spherical transform node which you can find in the uh, transform oops let me try up here um, did, 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 where are we transform spherical transform and the way this works is you tell it that you want to input a cubic map and once you do that you get six pipes that you connect according to the views that we created before so first of all let's split out the single views again so I'm gonna go create a frame hold here that is set to frame one that's gonna be minus Z then I'll uh, branch that off and make that frame two and so forth once we've got that I like toggling on the postage stamps for those frame holds but that's just me so I'll hit Alt P on them and toggle this off using Alt P okay and uh, now we've got that we can attach the pipes according to the views we rendered so the first frame is minus Z so that pipe goes here next one is plus Z so that goes here minus X plus X and now we've got minus Y that's looking down and finally plus Y that's looking up if we now look at the output of the spherical transform we get something that's very similar to our lat long output up here except we haven't defined the correct output format yet so I'll go into the spherical transform and this time we actually have to define a format because the spherical transform node insists on that so we'll go into format new I'll call it lat long and give it the same resolution as we used before 800 by 400 hit OK and now we have our lat long so if we compare it to what we had before I'll just copy the mirror and the sphere node put that on here so this is the uh, spherical map via the cubic maps which is easier to render it's a few more steps but it's more controllable it's easier to render you actually get tiles that you can easily retouch because you're looking at a fairly undistorted image and you don't get the vortexing problems and another benefit of having those six-pack tiles is that you can actually project them onto geometry if you need parallax in your final render rather than just creating a sphere again but we'll look into that sort of stuff in another tutorial